Oh, when it comes to the Pistons, they made history on a Tuesday night, but not in a good way at all. The Pistons losing the 27 straight game, 118 to 112 after the Brooklyn Nets handed it to them. It's the longest single season losing streak in league history, and it doesn't get any easier on Thursday. They have to face the Celtics, and it could be going up to 28. Here's Monty Williams with more on this losing situation he's seen from his group this year. Is it heavy? Yeah, I, I would imagine for everybody it is. Nobody wants this kind of thing attached to them. And, you know, I, I was brought in here to to change this thing. And it's, it's probably the most on me than anybody. You know, the players are playing their hearts out. I got to get them in a position where they don't feel tight or heavy. But... You know, it's where we are. That's the reality of the situation. Don't jump off the boat. We got to stay together. Uh, right now is the easiest time to to stand off and, and be on your own. Um, but we need to continue to lean on each other and continue to push each other and hold each other accountable more than ever now. Whatever they need to do, they need to get it done fast in the Motor City because right now with that 27th loss in a row, they surpassed the 2013-14 Sixers and the 2010 Cavaliers who lost 26 straight. They now hold their record at least for 27. They're on track to finish 5-77 and 77 the way it looks up there in Detroit and a lot of question marks looking for maybe some blue lining. So we need to find answers and we go to the source. That source is a guy who knows Detroit pretty well. Our guy Rip Hamilton and this is personal for you. So I'm going to be gentle as I can be. First thing first, 27 straight losses. Um, I know you haven't been a part of that ever in your career, high school, college, or professional, but just your reaction to seeing this unfold up to this point. Well, well Brandon, first, I shouldn't be coming on air uh, smiling right now, <laughs> especially the way that you kind of teed me up right there. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but, but definitely, uh, this is a situation that uh, a lot of Pistons fans uh, people in the city of Detroit is just not accustomed to. Uh, coming into the season, there uh, was a lot of excitement in the building. One, because Kate Cunningham will be back uh, uh, in, in the lineup. But we all understood that uh, this is a young team, and they're still understanding and, and trying to, to figure out how to win basketball games, especially at, at the professional level. But again, though, when you lose like we lost, especially last year, and you can kind of look at the San Antonio Spurs. Everybody was losing games to try to get get into the Victor Wembanyama sweet stakes. Sometimes it's hard mentally to adjust to get the team back to to, to winning. Uh, when you look back to, to the 2013-2014 season with the 76ers, they were losing games wide to try to get Joel and Bead uh, on that team. Uh, so now you got a, a great young nucleus on your ball club, and you don't win games in the NBA just by having young guys in. You can tell by just the turnovers. Cade alluded to that many times in his interview. They're saying, hey, we got to control the ball more. And and I personally can't turn turn the ball over. Yes, he did a great job of scoring last night. And in, in the games that he scored, Brandon, in the games that he scored over 30, the teams didn't come out with a win. That's not good when your star player comes out and win, uh, has a great basketball game on the offense end, and you can't get the win at the end of the game. But that's just being young. I mean, uh, when you're young, you're still trying to figure out on the defense end. I don't think we're as connected as we should be, especially at this point in the season. But uh, Monty's trying to come back and get uh, bring back the winning culture. I just feel as though in the, in the, in the previous couple couple years prior to this, uh, the team didn't have no identity. And I think that's what he's trying to figure out right now with this group, trying to create an identity where you can come out and win, especially close close basketball game. I mean, K can't do anything more. He dropped 40, as you mentioned there, and that plus 30 stat when it comes to still taking L's. You have the trophy over your right shoulder. You know the tradition and the standard when it comes to this ball club, being part of that and running to a title. But what's been the glaring missing link? You, you kind of hinted at it there, the leadership. What has been missing for the Detroit Pistons this year? Like, like you alluded to, the leadership. I think that Cade is still learning his, his players. Uh, learn the guys on his team. Uh, he's the guy that uh, everybody in Detroit knows that is and should be the leader of this ball club. But when you're young, sometimes it's, it's not just that easy. That's why I think it's always key to bring in some veteran guys, veteran guys that uh, that know how to lead, but also know how to win at the NBA level. It's totally different than high school and it's different than college and AAU. Uh, these are professionals. Uh, so 
when you look at the Pistons and when you're trying to create an identity, uh, yes, uh, Bogdanovich is now back in, in, in the lineup. Uh, looking forward for Morris to be back in the lineup. Guys like that that can come in, lead by example, uh, not just by on the floor, but vocally, but just teaching guys uh, about time and possession. I think that's the biggest thing out of anything. When you looked at the fourth quarter last game, Detroit uh, lost the fourth quarter by 10 points. And when you're a young team, you got to understand when to push it, when to bring it out, when to not throw the alley hoop and just throw a simple bounce pass so a guy can get an easy finish to the basket, when to not give up big threes, especially corner threes in the fourth quarter. Little things like that can be the big difference on winning basketball games. Big picture here, Rip, because a lot of question marks as you look ahead to the schedule Thursday. They play the Celtics, and you know a lot of people are penciling that in for their next loss. It would be 28, and then after that, we just don't know where they can snap this streak. But I'm curious. I mentioned they're on pace to finish five and 77. If you're Monty Williams and this front office, we've seen this rebuild up to this point. Do you reset the button again? There's been conversation maybe Kate Cunningham that's your best piece I, I don't know what do you do with this team to kind of build towards a contender in the East Brandon I never looked at it, it, it when you said five and what? <laughs> well, I don't even know what the what the, what the what the loss column was but uh I just feel like no you can't jump off the ship you know this is what you signed up for because yes last year they could have said all right you know what uh or the year prior to that oh yeah it's some really good free agents out there uh, let's just go out there and just spend money and try to try to go out and get the best players uh, available, especially in free agency. No, they built through the draft and they understand that, hey, this is going to be a process. Uh, you're not just going to come out and win automatically just because you got great draft picks. That that doesn't work in the NBA. Uh, when you look at San Antonio again, they got Victor Wimayana. They thought that he was going to come in and they're going to win games instantly. Uh, that just didn't happen. When you look at Philadelphia 76ers when they brought in Joel Embiid, they didn't win right away. It takes time. So I just feel as though that, no, you cannot jump off the ship. You sign Monty up to this job to bring that culture, that winning atmosphere back to the team. You got uh, a great backcourt with uh, Kate and Ivy now being on the floor at the same time. I just think that you got to be patient uh, with this roster. Patience is there, and I'm curious how your patience might be running thin. I want to bring up the next couple of games here. And just for kicks and giggles, where can they get a win to snap this streak? Rip, what you thinking? I'm thinking the Celtics. I'm, oh. I'm going with that. I mean, just think about it. Like, you know, when you're the Boston Celtics, you're one of the best teams in the league right now. This is a game you can kind of look over. Uh, uh, look over. Uh, so I just feel as though the Pistons, if they're – if they're if they come out with the type of energy, especially early in the game, and not turn the ball over in the fourth quarter, anything can happen. So I'm going I'm going with against the Celtics. Wow, the Celtics. That would be a bad one. You know, Boston and other teams, they don't want to be that team to lose to the team on a streak like this. Rip Hamilton calling it on Thursday. My man, appreciate it as always, but taking a look at it. The last time they won a game, it wasn't November, it wasn't December, it was October 28th versus the Bulls. Back then, the World Series was tied at one game apiece. The Panthers, they had zero wins. They don't have too many now. San Jose Sharks, they were 0-7-1, and Daylight Saving had not yet happened. So anything can happen with the Pistons, but they are one away from tying that record all time. We'll see what happens on Thursday against the Celtics. And Rip, calling it a W already.